Hello, and welcome to another episode of Andy's Shed Live. Coming to you this Sunday, the 7th of May, 2017. Hello, and welcome to the show. We've got a packed one for you tonight. If you are interested in vintage telephones, please do stick around. We've got something a little bit unusual and a little bit different. If you're in the UK, America or Denmark, you are going to want to watch this coming up here this evening. So, here we are. It's episode 9. This is this is the ninth show that we've done over a period of something like about 11 weeks. We missed a couple of weeks. So, how are you enjoying it so far? Um, I want to start off the show today by saying a big, big thank you to everybody who has... Uh, been watching the videos, um, giving us a thumbs up, giving us a like, and thanks to all the people who have subscribed to the channel. We're now 120 something subscribers on the channel, and uh, that's all thanks to you guys out there spreading the word. So, a big, big thank you to everybody out there who has done that for us. Um, now, I've got an apology to make. If you were wanting to see the footage from Heed Windmill this week, I'm afraid we've got such a packed show this week that we're not going to be able to fit it in. But next week, all being well, footage from Heed Windmill. Promise. I do promise that next week we'll have, have the footage from Heed Windmill, which took place last week, which was a, an event that we, uh, that we had last week. And um, we've also got quite a lot of events coming up in May. Now, we are well into May now, it's the 7th of May, we're nearly a third of the way through it already. So, uh, if you've got your uh, diary handy, here are a few events that are around this area uh, in May. Now, I'm sorry these are all like hyperlocal to me in this area, but th these are the things that I'm going to be at, and you can go and see me and the Andy Shed team at uh, over the next few weeks if you happen to be around the sort of uh, North East Derbyshire or South Yorkshire area. So, here they are, without further ado. Right, on the 13th and 14th of May, this is actually next weekend, it's the Sheffield Collectors Club, and they're doing something a little bit different this month. Now, they normally have their display days, their monthly display days, at uh, the Kellam Island Industrial Museum in Sheffield. But this month, they're moving. They're off to Abbeydale Industrial Hamlet, which is also in Sheffield, um, it's another industrial museum site in Sheffield. It's a really old, well, an industrial hamlet, a, a really old industrial site that is extremely well preserved, actually. Well worth going and having a look at. There's a special event taking place there over next weekend and the Sheffield Collectors Club will be there as a part of it. It's on 13th and 14th of May. The Collectors Club, they'll be there from, from around about 11am each day until around about 4pm. That's Saturday and Sunday of next weekend. And there'll be a display of all kinds of things. Now, people have been saying to me, what do the Collectors Club uh, have on their display? Well, it can be anything. And if you're interested in joining the Collectors Club, then you are more than welcome to do so. Come along to Abbeydale next weekend and have a chat with the guys and gals there. But basically, it's for anybody who collects anything. So if you collect anything, whether it be old stuff or modern stuff, I mean, there's one guy there who collects, uh, who collects mammoth steam toys. There's another guy who collects um, memory sticks, you know, modern computer memory sticks like uh, like this one but he collects uh, he collects novelty ones in all funny shapes and things um so whether it be something new or old if you're a collector of anything and rather than have your collection just like shoved in a box somewhere or a drawer or something get it out and display it to the public and tell them about what you do and that and you never know you, you might get some more somebody might might bring you something they might say yeah i've had this laying around for ages and, and you can have it because you seem interested. So, yeah, um, come along to the Collectors Club. If you are a collector of absolutely anything, we would love to see you. And even if you're not, come along and uh, see us and say hello as well. So that's as part of this special event over there at Abbeydale Industrial Hamlet. 
um, on 13th and 14th of May, which is next weekend. Um, if you want to go and have a find more details about that, get onto the Sheffield Collectors Club website, which is sheffieldcollectorsclub.wordpress.com. That's sheffieldcollectorsclub.wordpress.com, and you'll be able to find out more about uh, what the Collectors Club does exactly there. Then, a little bit later in May, the last Saturday in May, the uh, 27th of May, it's the Repair Cafe at Healy City Farm. This is a bi-monthly event. It takes place once every two months. And basically, the Repair Cafe is where you can go along and take your broken stuff. If you've got anything that needs repairing, rather than throwing it away and buying a new one, Take it on to the repair cafe and the team of volunteer repairers there will help you fix it. And, or they'll do their best to help you fix it anyway. There's no guarantees that they'll be able to do it of course, but most of the time they can. So why buy new stuff when you can fix the old stuff? And you can take absolutely anything. Now again, people have said to me, what can you take along to a repair cafe? Well, basically anything you can carry. If you can get it to Healy City Farm on Saturday the 27th of May, um, somebody will take a look at it and help you repair it or advise you how you can get it repaired and, and get it fixed. So the team of fixers will be out there. That's Saturday the 27th of May for the Repair Cafe over there at uh, Healy City Farm. And if you want to find out more about that, get on the Repair Cafe website. That's sheffieldrepaircafe.wordpress.com dot com that's sheffield repair cafe dot wordpress dot com and also on that saturday but we won't be there on the saturday because we'll be at the repair cafe we will only be there on the 28th of may it actually runs over both days 27th and 28th of may um it's an, a special event at cromford wharf on the cromford canal near matlock in derbyshire this is one for those of you who are a little bit further south than sheffield there um this is a great one. Uh, I went to this for the first time towards the back end of last year. And if you look on the channel um, for a video for Cromford Wharf Discovery Days, or Discovery Day at Cromford Wharf, look for that video and that will give you an idea of basically what it's all about. There'll be all sorts happening on the historic Crom Cromford Wharf on the canal there it's near matlock and matlock bath in derbyshire just a stone's throw away from Crich and the tramway museum just up the hill as well and of course you can get trains to cromford there is a station there at cromford meadows with trains from derby as well so if you can get yourself over to cromford on uh, sunday the 28th of may i absolutely guarantee you a great day out i'm hoping to be there with the stationary engines on that particular event so I'll, I'll be there with the old with the old vintage engines and uh, you'll be able to see them running there so that's your events diary so it's 13th and 14th of may for the sheffield collectors club display at habidale industrial hamlet in sheffield it's saturday the 27th of may for the repair cafe at uh, Healy City Farm in Sheffield and it's Sunday the 28th of May for the Cromford Wharf event on the Cromford Canal at near Matlock in Derbyshire. So that is your events diary for May for this area at least of this year and of course if you've got anything that you want to add to the diary then uh, please get in touch with us. The easiest way to get in touch with us is either by leaving a comment under this video on YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube, or you can go to our website and click on the Contact Us uh, page. And that will then let you send us a private message if you want to send it to us privately. And our website, of course, as always, is andyshed.wordpress.com that's andyshed.wordpress.com okay got that marvellous and uh, that's the place to go if you want any more information about anything we've talked about as well if, if you're unsure of anything you want any more information get on andyshed.wordpress.com uh, there and uh, send us a little message get in touch with us via the contact us form thing on there and uh, 
then we will be able to reply to you. And I've tried to reply to everybody who contacts us on there as fast as we possibly can. I can't always do it immediately, but I do at least try to do it within like a couple of days at the very most. If I've not contacted you in a couple of days, feel free to nudge me and get in touch with us again. And uh, we'll do whatever we can. Now... Coming up in the show today, I said we've got a very unusual thing for anybody interested in old telephones. I'm just moving it around a little bit at the minute. Uh, on the desk here. Um, but yeah, we've, we've got something really odd for anybody who's interested in, in phones. Can anybody out there tell me what this is? Anybody got any ideas what this is? I found this at the car boot sale in Sheffield today. Um, got no idea what it is. Well, I've got a little bit of an idea what it is. But I'll tell you an amazing story about this when we come back after this short break. Hello and welcome back to Andy Shed Live for this Sunday the 7th of May 2017. And if you're just joining us, you've just come along in time. Now I know we've got a lot of people who collect telephones and restore old telephones who watch this show. So we've got something a little bit unusual for you. At least I think it's unusual. I have seen these before but never quite realised what they were until now. Now, I've been, I'll tell you the story, right? Are you sitting comfortably? Then I'll begin. I've uh, been over to Sheffield today to a couple of car boot sales and things that they have like first Sunday of each month. And one of the people at the car boot sale, uh, a guy, a dealer who often has very interesting things, I bought an oil lamp for me a couple of months ago, um, had this old telephone on his stall and I gave him the princely sum of 15 pound for it so here it is all right what's this now I'll tip it up so you can see it on the overhead camera a little bit easier there now, here, here it is now have we got any idea what this is I can tell you this bit is metal this how is it is metal that this bit on the handset here is plastic Right, that bit on there is, or at least I believe it's plastic. And there's bits on the handset that are plastic. But all the bits that are sort of goldy coloured are brass. And it's brass that has been um, like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? It, it's, it's brass that has been coated, it's been uh, it's been lacquered or varnished or something to try and keep it shiny, but the lacquer's gone in places, which is why it's looking a bit manky. But it is brass and it will it will clean up. Because um, I have had a little rub at it in, in one place on the uh, on the on the sort of uh, rest here, and it, it has cleaned up a little bit. Now. The interesting thing about this is I always thought these phones were like reproduction things. I always thought they were things that came along from the uh, from the 1970s or even early 1980s. So I've never paid them much attention. But this one was on there and it was kind of at the right price. And somebody asked me one for this week. Somebody was in, in the antique centre where I have a little stall at Bolgover. And they asked me about a, about a phone and they described what they wanted. And it seemed it was one of these. Now I'd read a thing online that these phones were basically put together out of bits sometime in the 1950s. And on the base of this phone, and I've already taken the base off so I can show it to you, was this card. Which I don't know if you can see that, but it's got a guarantee number and it says Design B2, 
date 7 1 1972 and then it says the only original antique telephone originating from Expoga Denmark so it seems that this is a telephone that originates from Denmark and has been taken by somebody somebody's bought a batch of old phones from Denmark and I think they bought them for the American market because if you look at the dial it's American because the placing of the letters which number these letters correspond to is the American pattern um, particularly if you look for the O which is here you see M N O if it was a British dial the O is on the zero down here but all there is on the zero on this is operator uh, so it's been it's been Americanized so we think it's a phone from Denmark that's been Americanized uh, and it looks like it was done in about 1972 so I then thought this was a phone from the sort of 70s made to look old so I took that bottom plate off which was very difficult to get off because it had got these little these little feet with the screw holding the, that bottom plate on underneath through the middle of these little rubber feet that have gone hard over the years so that it was really difficult to uh, to get the base off the phone um, because of these rubber feet but I managed to get it off and I'll show you underneath it because it didn't tell me much because all I found underneath was that so basically there's what looks like a big capacitor under there and a coil and that's it and I didn't find anything else under there so I then thought, right, how do you get into this then? Because normally you just take the bait off a phone and all the gubbins is there. But not in this case. So it was back to the drawing board and I started to look on the top. And when I looked on the top, I noticed these two little cap nuts or cap bolts or whatever they are on here. So I thought, right, we'll take these off. So these tiny little brass things, um, but they weren't tight, and I've not put them on tight, so I can get up, I can just get them off just by grabbing them with a pair of pliers here. Because you need a really small spanner to get at these, but I've not tightened up. Cause I'll be honest, I've I've had them off already. <laughs> um, so we'll undo them again because I found something amazing inside this uh, so here we go and anybody who knows what these are is probably going to be able to guess what it is what I found inside here um, but what model of phone is this because on that little ticket on the bottom it said it's a B2 yeah said oh it's a, B, it's a B2 um, but I've done a little bit of searching online and I think it might actually be a D8 if you look for a Denmark D8 telephone it looks very similar to this and I can't find anything online about a B2 so I think it's actually a D8 telephone from Denmark so now I've taken those two little little brass bolts out and now magically the whole of this will just lift off and if I take the handset off there because the handset is still attached to the phone obviously I'll just put that down alongside and then uh, the sort of switch hook thing then is on its own like that you see so I can put that to one side for a moment I'm going to put it put it down there somewhere out of the way and then we can see what we've got here now what we've got here then 
is this and there's a thing that operates the switch hook and I've just realised I've still got this phone plugged in to the main so I'm just going to unplug it from the system because it's plugged into my phone system at the minute so that's it I've unplugged it there right so there's what your switch hook presses on and this is the bell this is the ringer this goes backwards and forwards and uh, and it hits on the inside of this through that little hole there and this is the bell this thing here I give it a, a tap with something see so that would be quite a nice sounding bell I think so can we get inside this well I thought now how do you get the top off and much to my surprise having taken those two little bolts out it just lifts off like that. Now there's a dial on the front, so you've obviously got connections to the dial, which you've got to be a bit careful you don't like pull out or do anything silly with. But you look inside here now, and the amazing part is that stamped on here is a date. Now I don't know if you can see this or not on that camera up there, but the date on there is the 2nd of February 1933 that's the 2nd of February 1933 okay so it really is old it really is old so if I can just put that there like that a minute I'll get I'll get this camera down and I'll try and give you a closer shot of what's going on in here if I possibly can right. here we are right so here's the inside of it right there is the uh, the ringer mechanism and you can see it moving this rod here and these are your bell coils these two coils here are your are your bell coils for the thing and then down here we've got all the connections okay you see those but what I want to know is what should be connected where on these connections so let's go from this end and call it connection one two three four and so on from that end I want to know what I should connect a line cord to for it to work on the modern British system so I want to know what I connect a line cord to to get it to work on the modern British system so if going from left to right on there it's uh, we'll call it terminals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 what should I be connecting a line cord to because at the minute I think it's wired up wrong and there's a reason I think it's wired up wrong and that is because it's got a fault now I'm just going to put this camera back now I'm dismantling everything here I'm kind of regretting it that I've moved that now because things have fell on the floor um, so the question is what should I connect that to I'm just readjusting that camera that I moved getting it back in focus there we go yeah what what uh, what connections on here should I be putting the line cord onto because at the minute there's four line cord connections wired up there's a red a white a green and a blue and it's actually an old trim phone cable that it's uh, it's connected to because here's the cable it's all coiled up here you see and then on the end of it the end of the cable there's this curly bit 
which gives away that it's a trim foam cable. So I'm going to take that off and put that on a trim foam, that, that cable, and I'll put a different cable on this. But I want to know what I should be connecting to down inside here because I think there's certain things that should be jumpered together and certain things that should not be jumpered together and I think I probably need to put in a 3.3k resistor somewhere in there as well but I don't know exactly where now there are various websites out there online that we normally go to to get information uh, about converting foams that we then pass on to you but on those websites at least on all the ones that I've found so far there's no information about this particular type of foam so it's uh, it's kind of over to you a little bit but I, I really do want to know what it should be wired to because as I say at the moment it's faulty it rings out fine you know I can dial out on it and, and make a call on it but when I ring into it nothing happens basically what happens is I ring into the I ring into it from another phone and I hear then in the uh, in the earpiece of this I hear just for like a second or maybe two seconds I hear ringtone in the earpiece of this while it's on the hook but then the ringtone stops it goes dead and I then get just a, uh, a unobtainable tone from the on the phone that I'm calling from you know so there's there's something not wired quite right so somewhere in it I believe I believe there's something not wired right in it um, and I'm wondering if it's when it was converted, when it when this, I'm wondering if it's never worked since it's been converted. Somebody's had a go at converting it, found it didn't work, and then thought, oh, sod it, and and just left it at that, because uh, it was uh, the 1973 date is obviously when it was restored for America, I believe, but then it's come over to Britain, and somebody has done things with it. Uh, like fitting that trim foam cable um, since it's come over here so if anybody can help me with this I'm all ears if you've got any ideas at all kind of what's going on with this I would love to hear from you I'm just going to try and get it all back together now and get it all into one piece again so that just drops on there and I'm just making sure that I've not trapped any cables in it. And you can see it's painted on the top. I think this probably dates from like the 1970 date on it, um, all of this, because I can't see this would have survived otherwise. And I've got a feeling it might have originally been black as well. I don't know this for certain, but I've got a feeling it might have originally been black. Oops. I've got the, got the covery thing stuck now. That's it. It's back down again. So, we'll reinstall this. And remember, that has got to pass through this hole on here. So, it's got to go that way around. Yeah, can you see that? Because that little thing there has got to go through that hole there. So that's got to go on there like that. And then I can put these two little brass nuts in, and they and they got they're fancy. They look like uh, they look like the sort of uh, cap nuts on a bolt. But they're actually just a, a fancy brass, fancy brass bolt that goes in, or a fancy brass machine screw, or whatever you like to call it. It's not really a machine screw; it's a bolt. It's not got a cross head in it on the top. And you just do them up. I'm only going to do them up finger tight for now. And then you can put your receiver back on, and I'll show you what it does. I'll I'll plug it in again. And I'll 
actually show you what it does right I've plugged it in plugged it in now to my um, internal phone system and I'm going to dial it I'm going to firstly I'm going to call this black phone here so you'll hear this black phone ring so I'm going to call it on my internal system the black one is 21 so I dial 21 on here and that's that's the black phone ringing there okay but uh, but when I dial the from the black phone to this one this one is 23 on my system that's all that happens now did you hear that so I've got a dial tone on there now that's a bit of a weird dial tone but it is a dial tone I dial 23 and then that goes completely dead okay but as I do it as I dial 23 I get a bit of a buzz from the in the handset of this I don't know if you'll be able to hear this when I do it just for a second did you hear that and that's that's what happens that's that's what I get from it so if you've got any idea what uh, is going on there with that I would love to hear from you uh, either comment below the video or uh, as I've said before go over to Andy Shed and send us a message on there Andy Shed dot wordpress dot com so that is what i found at the car boot sale today this uh, this rather nice telephone dating from 1933 we believe so it, you know that's pretty old for a telephone um and i think when it's cleaned up i think it'll be really nice i'm going to polish the brass up on that on it and I've never bothered with these folks I've always thought they were like a modern reproduction thing but what's bothering me slightly is this plastic handset plastic from 1933 how does that work that just seems a bit odd somehow so I don't know what's going on there or what was the what's the handset bit changed in uh, in the early 70s when it was when it was altered in uh, 1972 was the, was the handset bit changed then but if if you look up uh, Denmark D8 telephone on uh, on the internet you'll find some pictures that look very very similar to this so I think it came from Denmark I think somebody bought a job lot of them I've heard anecdotal stories that in the 50s maybe somebody bought a job lot of them and started selling them in the US and it is anecdotal um, don't know how true it is at all but uh, that is uh, the story that I've heard so I think this went from Denmark to the US and it's ended up here in the UK so it's, it's had a bit of a trip this old telephone hasn't it yes right I think that about wraps it up for today when we find out a bit more about this phone or when we get it working even then uh, we'll do another feature on it and we will show you how to restore it properly and that just in case you happen to have one because I say they do turn up from time to time these phones I have seen them around occasionally so uh, it's one where there's not much information on the old interweb thingy about it so uh, maybe we could uh, we could put a bit more info out there so that about wraps it up for another show all that remains to be done is to say a big thank you to you all for watching and all for supporting the channel there is one other thing that uh, that i just want to mention one or two people have asked about if they can support the show at all um, the answer to that is yes you can one of the best ways of supporting it is just by watching spreading the word about it and uh, subscribing to the channel and telling everybody else about it and getting them to subscribe as well but we are going to start a patreon page um, very soon um, whereby you will be able to make 
a little financial contribution if you feel so inclined you know just a few pennies or a few cents or whatever the currency is in your country per episode and um, that will help us do a little bit more and we might be able to go more than once weekly then with this show and do more in-depth things with uh, with things like this old phone uh, down here oops i had a bit bit of finger trouble there so yeah we, we might we might be able to do a little bit more if uh, if we get the old Patreon page going, but that's something for the future. We've not got it going yet, so for the time being, you can't you can't uh, support us on Patreon yet. But hopefully, you will be able to soon. As soon as that's up and running, of course, we'll put it on the website andyshed.wordpress.com, and we'll uh, let you know on the show as well. Now, next week, we're going to be taking a break from the main show on a Sunday next week because we've got this special event on over over the two days over at Abbeydale Industrial Hamlet but hopefully we will have a little pre-recorded show from Abbeydale um, coming up um, sometime in the week not this week coming but obviously after we've done it at Abbeydale next weekend so we'll not be here next Sunday live but a couple of days after that We'll hopefully have a pre-recorded episode for you that we've done from Abbeydale Industrial Hamlet in Sheffield. And then a fortnight today, hopefully, we'll be back live with more Andy Shed Live. But from all of us here for now, a big thank you for watching. And uh, remember to like and subscribe. And this next caption is telling a lie. Because it says on it, I'll see you next week, but we'll see you in a fortnight's time. But still remember to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time, right here on Andy Shed. Bye for now. <laughs>